At this point in time, just about everybody can shoot video, whether it's through your mobile phone or your camera. But how do you edit that video? Maybe you're using iTunes or maybe you have Premiere Pro, you don't know how to use it. But if you have Photoshop, I'm going to show you right now how to do amazing video editing using nothing but Adobe Photoshop. <laughs> Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today I'm going to show you how to edit video inside of Photoshop. Now Photoshop is like a little mini After Effects and Premiere Pro jammed into one program. It's actually really powerful editing video. A lot of people don't realize that and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So Photoshop is actually really quite capable as a video editor and let's get started right now. So the first thing we want to do is we want to bring a video clip into Photoshop. So we just choose File and then we're going to choose Open. Then we just grab a video clip and then just click on Open. Two things will happen. One, the video will now appear inside of Photoshop. And the other thing is you'll see the timeline will now appear. If you don't see the timeline, go up under Window Timeline. So remember, you have to have Photoshop CS6 extended or any version of Photoshop CC to do video. Other versions will not work with video. All right, so the timeline is really important because this is our headquarters for doing all things video. And if you look at this, we can see we've got two and a half minutes. So that's two minutes and 30 seconds worth of video. If I click on the playhead here, I can scrub through the video, which means I'm moving backwards and forwards in it in time so I can quickly find the spot that I want to work with. This is shot with my DJI Mavic Pro and you can see I start to fly down and then go up and tilt the camera and all that stuff. We're not going to do any of that. We're just going to keep it to some just basic waterfall shot here. So I'm thinking this is a good little place to start there. So if I click at the end here, notice what happens. It shows where we are in time and it shows the duration on the top right and that says 2 minutes 32 seconds and 28 frames. That's way too long so I'm going to shorten it. I'm just going to click and drag and notice that playhead as I'm dragging that down. Notice that window shows what's going to preview on that video. So we're going to shorten it down to here and now I want to just play it back. So I'm going to move my playhead and to play it back either hit that play button or tap the space bar and playback will begin. To finish playback, hit the space bar again. I think that's about long enough. Anything more than that, it starts to get boring. So that's one of the tips I want to give you guys when it works with the videos. Keep those clips nice and short and keep the pace moving so people don't get bored. All right, let's add some more clips in there. To add more clips, you don't want to choose file open. What you want to do is click on this little icon there and choose add media. All right, so we're going to add media and I'm going to grab four more. So I'm just going to marquee select these other four videos and choose open. Now we have five clips here on the timeline. Now here's a little tip. If you can't see them all, just click on this little triangle Move it to the left and it will change that. Move it to the right, it'll enable you to zoom right in to the frame level. This does not change the duration or the speed of the video. All it does is changes the way you display the timeline to help you work. Now, this timeline is really important and it correlates here with the layers panel. So if you look at the layers panel, you see everything is in a video group. As long as everything's in a video group, it's going to appear one after the other on the timeline. And these are going to work as ripple. What does that mean? It means that gaps are not going to appear between the clips. Everything is just going to automatically snap and close up when we remove or add or shorten or lengthen different clips. All right, so something really different happens with video in the layers panel. Normally, the layers panel, you stack layers one on top of the other. 
higher up in the layers panel, the more forward they are in the shot. The ones at the back also appear at the bottom. But instead of stacking layers like that, what we're doing is we're stacking clips in time. And if we look at our very first clip, if I click here, notice it appears white. It also has a white box around it in the layers panel. So the very first clip appears at the bottom of the layers panel. As we move up the layers panel, notice here we're progressing forward in time. So the very last clip will be at the top. The very first clip will be at the bottom. So if you want to rearrange the order, you can just simply click and drag them in the layers panel. So right now we've got that. What if we want to change the order? We just simply click and drag and notice how they change right there. Alternatively, we can click and drag here and release and notice it will switch their position right there in the layers panel. So those are different ways of ordering your frames. So the first thing you want to do when you're editing video is you want to get your clips into Photoshop. Now notice I didn't have to do anything with the settings because it takes the settings from the camera and sets up your video project with the frame rate and the size of the video that you import. The next step we need to do is rearrange the order and get it how we want it, which we've done now. The next step we need to do now is we need to trim those clips down and it's super easy. Let's just click and drag in here and I'm going to shorten this down to about four and a half seconds. Now I can tell it's four and a half seconds because I can see in the duration on the top right of that little box there. See that? And if I click and drag, notice I can watch that clip. And you know what? If I want to start the clip, oh, I didn't like that movement. See that? We want to avoid that. All right, so we'll start after that sudden jerky movement. And I think about there's a great place to start the clip. Notice that it automatically trims it. Let's find the end. So we're going through there. We're watching that. Let's just do a few seconds of just moving through that water. I'll release it there. Now, they, they, most of these are my drone shots, just in case you guys were wondering. All right, let's do the next one. And uh, here we've got Natasha. She's doing an Alice in Wonderland theme. So we've got her kind of looking around. So we can decide, do we want the shot where I'm panning around with my drone? I think that's kind of nice. Now let's start there and click on the end to see the duration. 10 seconds, a little bit long. Let's shorten it down. That's good. So notice now we've shortened this down significantly. Let's just click this so we can see what's in those clips. And now we've got about a 28 second clip altogether. All right, so now you can see we've shortened those clips. Now, if you needed to cut them and rearrange them, we can also do that. So say we wanted to have a waterfall there and we also wanted to have some waterfall later on. So we simply go where we want, click the scissor tool that will cut it in half, unselect it first by just clicking away, grab that second clip. We could move it to the very end if we wanted, scrub forward here and notice there's our waterfall now at the end. If I want to delete it, select it, hit delete. And what if I want to bring it, bring it back? Well, everything is non-destructive. I simply click and I can just drag it out and just bring it back. So you have a lot of flexibility there with those clips. You can cut them, you can stretch them to bring them back. You can drag them in to shorten them. It's not throwing away the video, it's just choosing what part of the video is gonna display. So right now we've finished the first phase of our video and that's arrangement. So let's have a quick look and play back what we've got so far. Take the play here to the beginning. We can drag it or we can just click this little button there to take it to the beginning. Hit the space bar and let's play it. You can see there's our waterfall. Here's another shot of Laguna Beach. Now, all of these I shot on my drones, except for the very last shot I, saw, I shot on my Sony a7 III. And you'll see that in a second. These are all drone shots here. And so I just hit that space bar. Notice there was a lot of music there, so it was kind of loud. I don't want to use this music on the clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that clip and I'm gonna right click and notice where it says video. If we click that little music icon, we have audio controls for each clip. So now I could fade it in or fade it out, you know, would kind of ramp it, or I could turn the volume down or up to balance the audio of those clips. 
In this case, I don't want to use it, so I'm going to choose Mute Audio, hit the space bar to continue playing, and notice we've got this nice bokeh, and this is some bokeh that I shot out of focus at EDC, and I'm going to use this for an effect uh, later on in this tutorial. So now we've arranged the clips, we've got them in the order, and we've got the duration that we want. The next phase is we're going to start to finesse and polish our video. So what we want to do is do some adjustments. We want to make them look nice. So one of the amazing things about video in Photoshop is you can use just about all of the filters and you can use just about all of the adjustment layers. In fact, you can use all the adjustment layers the same way you would do them on an image and they work on video. So the first one we're going to work on here is this one up here. This is Cape May, New Jersey. And you know what? I'm going to show you a couple of different things. I'm going to select this and I want to apply a filter. Now, here's the problem. If I choose a filter and I'll just apply a Gaussian blur just to show you. So I apply this blur. See, I can quickly do that. But notice what happens. It will only work on one frame. See that? So you'll see that blur will appear just in that one frame. Why is that? Well, that's because we applied it to that one frame of the video. So we don't want to work that way. So let's undo that. Command Z. We'll undo that. And what we want to do is choose this clip again. And this time, go up into the Layers panel, right-click, and choose Convert to Smart Object. Now this is a smart object. If we applied this Gaussian Blur, which we're not really going to use, but I just want to show you. If we apply this now, it will apply to the entire clip. See that? And the reason it works that way is because when I'm applying it to a smart object, it puts all of that video into one container, and then I'm applying that filter to the container, which will affect everything inside of it. So remember, if you want to use filters, which you can, make sure you convert them to smart objects first. All right, I'm going to undo it. I'm going to show a much better filter. All right, so here we are. We've got a smart object. I want to apply a filter and check this out. Filter, camera raw. Yes, you can use camera raw on video. It's pretty amazing. So let me make all the adjustments I want. I'm just going to uh, recover some of the highlights there. Let's open up a little bit of the shadows. Punch out whites. Give out blacks a bit of a boost. Let's give it a punch of contrast. Uh, give it a little texture. And I also want to give it a punch of vibrance. So if we look at that, this is what it looked like before and after. Much more vibrant. Might even cool it down just a little bit. Now yeah, let's warm it up. Nice. Okay, I'm going to click OK. Watch this. And if I hit the space bar, it's going to take a little bit longer to play it. But notice now that that camera raw adjustment has now applied to the video. Now, don't worry about the fact that it was kind of really jerky movements right now. That's because it's trying to play it back and it's trying to compute that for each frame. When we render this video, it'll play back smooth as butter. So don't worry about that at this stage. In this case here, though, I'm just going to undo because I just wanted to demonstrate we could use camera raw. So a more efficient way of working with color correction is to use adjustment layers inside of Photoshop. I just wanted to show you, you can use filters if you want. Now, if we use adjustment layers, let's go, we've got our layer selected. And under our adjustment layer, let's do one that's quite difficult. Let's choose a gradient map. So let's just click on our gradient map here and let's get a nice kind of a golden color here. So we're going to find our gradient. By the way, you can click on these different gradients and notice how these will affect the image in different ways. So I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to grab a more golden looking one. Now, obviously, this is too much, although it looks kind of cool. I mean, if you want that kind of an effect, go for it. But what we're going to do here is I'm going to change the blend mode. So if we just go into here, we're going to go down to something like a soft light. And we're going to take the opacity down. Let's remove the effect and just apply a little bit. See that? So now we've got a nice kind of a coloring effect on here. And if you watch this, being an adjustment layer, notice how smoothly it can play back. The other thing is we can stack more than one adjustment layer. So let's grab a curves adjustment. 
And with the curves adjustment, we're just going to kind of give this a little snap. We go give it a little snap there in the midtones and just push down the shadows a little. Now notice that this is only affecting this one clip. See that? Now the reason it's only affecting one clip is because these are clipped. And if we hit the Alt or the Option key and click like that, now what it will do is it will affect all the layers underneath it. So notice that's not being affected, but these ones will be affected. Now the reason for that is, remember, we're stacking in time. So if you want to apply it just to an individual clip, make sure you hit the Alt or the Option key and click in there and just clip it to that clip. And notice it's not going to affect anything else. However, if you wanted to apply something to affect everything, what you would do is just go to the top of the layer stack and we're actually going to create a new adjustment layer. And why don't we just do a black and white just so I can demonstrate this to you. So we're just going to turn this on, make sure it's not clipped and notice the black and white affects this and all the other layers underneath because it's at the top of the layer stack. Now there's another way of doing this is if we click and drag this out, see that little line at the top that will appear at the top. And now we can have a black and white adjustment layer. So this adjustment layer on top could be any adjustment you wanted. And the nice thing about that is you can change the length of it. You could cut it, you can separate it. So that means that you could have the black and white come in or out. And remember, we're just using black and white. It could be any adjustment layer you wanted. Let me undo that. We can delete that. And another nice thing about this is we can fade it in and out if we wanted. So if we go under here under ramping, we could fade. So that means if I click and drag on there, this is now going to fade from color to black and white. See that? And if we click on that little adjustment there, we can click and drag that and actually have it fade much slower. So see, now it's just slowly fading to black and white. So I just wanted to show you these adjustments don't just need to be fixed adjustments. You can actually blend these adjustments in and out. Okay, let me just delete that because that was just really for your edification. So the next thing we want to do is why don't we work on some transitions because these are a little rough in between. So if we want to create transitions, click here. There's all our different transitions. You can change the duration of these, these are set to one second right now. I'm going to grab a crossfade and I'm going to click and drag it on each one. Now, before you ask, no, you can't batch process these. You have to manually do them. And let me show you what effect you get from those. See, now it seamlessly and smoothly blends from one clip into the next, even with the adjustment layers on it. See that? Great. So now you know how to work with transitions and you know how to work with filters and with adjustment layers. Now we're going to step it up another level because one of the great things about Photoshop is its ability to composite, to stack layers on top of each other and blend them together. We can do that with video as well. So let's look at this clip here, this bokeh clip that I did. Notice that we've got this nice bokeh effect. I want to overlay it over the shot of Natasha. So the way to do it is if we go in here, we need to break it out of the video group because you can't click or drag it. See, if you drag this, you can't get it onto a new layer. We need to click it, drag it above the video group. See that line appears, let go, and now it will pop on its own layer. So we just reposition it by clicking and dragging. And we can see that now we need to blend it. So all we need to do is just go up here and we can go under our different blending modes. Look at this. Just like we would normally. Screen mode looks really nice. And now we've got the two layers working against each other, creating this beautiful bokeh overlay effect. Now to really add the drama, I'd love that shot of Natasha to be in slow motion. So why don't we do that? So let's click on this clip, the one of Natasha, right click, under video, we can change the duration and speed. I'm going to change this to 50% speed. The duration is going to stay the same, so the clip's not going to get shorter or longer. It's just going to play a little bit less of it. So let's have a look at this. We play. Now she's in slow motion. We've got the bokeh going. We've got a real nice dreamy effect. 
Notice that finished first, let's drag our clip down so they end at the same. And now they're going to end there. Why don't we fade those to black? Grab a transition, fade to black on both of those. And now if we play this back, we get this nice fade to black. In fact, why don't we start with a fade from black? Just as simple as clicking and dragging. All right, so we're kind of there visually, but it really needs some sound because video is really important. If you've ever watched a movie with the sound turned off, the scariest movie is not scary at all. The sound adds so much. What we're going to do right now is we're going to import a music track. So if we click under here, under the music, see where it says that little audio track? Click here. We're going to choose Add Audio. And we're going to go here, and I've got some music I've grabbed here from Epidemic Sound. I'll give you guys a link underneath. It's a good place for royalty-free music. Let's right-click and see the volume right now is set to 100. Let's drop it down a little bit just in case it's too loud. And we can always adjust that later. Excellent. Now, another tip I'll give you guys is when you're editing your video, do it to the beat of the music. That's a little bit beyond what we've done here. I've got other tutorials on um, Premiere Pro where I go show you guys how to do that. So what we want to do now is we want to shorten the length of that audio so it's the same length as our clip, and we also want to fade that audio out nicely just to give it that nice polish. So what we need to do is get to the end of there. Let's just click. We can just click on here, drag it all the way down and just shorten it. Notice how everything just snaps nicely. Let's drag it back out so we can see it a bit better. There we go. And now we've got the same length. Let's take this to the beginning. There we go. So what we want to do is fade this audio in and out. So if we right click on here, we have an option to fade it in. Let's do two seconds. And let's do a three second fade out. And that's going to fade our audio. And at the end. So you can see there, now we've got the music nice and tight. So the last thing I want to do here is I'm just going to throw down uh, a title, just so you can see how you can mix motion graphics and video. And by the way, you can also mix slideshows, photos. Um, you can do smart objects, all kinds of different things in here. I'm going to do text. So why don't we click at the very top here? So we're going to create our text outside of our video group. And we're just going to click here. And we'll just call it Loving My Drone Shots. Now, of course, you could use any font you wanted. And uh, let's just make this a little bit bigger. Click away to apply. Let's start up there. And why don't we double click that and try something maybe a little fatter. So we can go down here, we can do a bold. Great, so we've got that shot. All right, so there's our title screen. What if we want to take it further, we want to animate it, we can do that too. So why don't we just pop this open? You'll see keyframes here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on transform. Transform is going to be the position and rotation. All right, so I want to start this off the screen. So I'm going to hit the shift key and click and drag it off the screen there. Shift key constrains it to horizontal. And now that's going to start there. But I want to come up to in time, maybe to about here. I want it to end. Now, notice that I've created that diamond keyframe. That means it's a starting place. The ending place is going to appear where our playhead is once we move it. So I'm going to hold down shift and drag across. And we're going to end it right there. And notice a second keyframe appears. Now, notice that we've got movement now between the two keyframes. So if we hit the space bar now. And let's take it a step further. Let's fade it. All right, and let's see what we've got for our video. All 
right, so we could add our end credits on there if we wanted as well. So I've kind of given you the building blocks for everything that you need to kind of start to build videos. Um, I'm gonna show you now how to export the video and produce from there. So I know there's a lot of information I'm jamming in here and maybe I'm moving a little quick. I apologize, but there's just so much to cover. If you wanna get deeper into this, I have created a premium course at Photoshop Cafe and it's called Making Movies in Photoshop. It's about two hours where I go at a nice pace where it's easy to follow along. I go much deeper than I am here. Um, and it's about a two hour video where we do a lot of different things. And that also comes with all the video clips that I'm using are also included on there. So you can follow along, use my videos and uh, sound effects, all kinds of different things like that. Um, if you're interested in that, I'm gonna give you a link underneath and I'll also give a 50% off coupon. So anyway, let's export this video now. So once you've created this video, and you want to get it out of Photoshop where we can view it on YouTube or wherever. What we need to do is just go under file, export, and then we're going to choose render video. The render window is going to come up and we're going to call this, um, I'm just going to call it YouTube demo. I, I should give it a better name, but that, that'll work. And I'm going to give it a location here. This is where I want it to go. So we're giving it a name, we've given it a location. Now we've got two options here. We can do an image sequence if you're doing visual effects, or we can output it here to Adobe Media Encoder. Now don't worry about all the complexity of it. We can just choose H.264, which is gonna be the uh, default. So H.264 is what's supported on YouTube, it's supported on iPads, iPhones, and pretty much every device, your computer, everything will work on H.264. Under preset, you can choose high quality, or we could go down and we can output it to YouTube 1080, which is what we're working on here. And I just hit render. And now it's gonna export this video and it's gonna be all ready for you to upload to YouTube. You know, you could do shorter ones for Instagram, whatever it is that you wanna do with it. All right, so there it is. And we can just go here and we can open this in QuickTime. So I'm really curious, uh, what do you guys think about editing video in Photoshop? Is this something that you've done, something you wanna try? Let me know in the comments underneath. If you like Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials, hit the subscribe button right now, become part of the Cafe Crew, and get a new video from me every single week. Make sure you ring that notification bell so you know when I upload, which is usually every Tuesday. So anyway, if you like this, smash the like button into dust, and until next time, I'll see you at the Cafe.